Oh, do you know what? It doesn't matter what I do, I can't get this thing to just start it. Anyway, doesn't matter. No, I've sorted it and I'll move my paper. This cameraman's now getting anxious. Okay, so this is about mineral nutrition in plants. <clears throat> and uh, plants need what we call macronutrients. So we're not going to conf, you know, we're not going to, even though the word is lovely, we're not going to worry about things like molybdenum. Oh, what a great word. So we're just going to look at some macronutrients in plants. And you need to know the uh, atom that is required or indeed, uh, in one case, the ion. You need to know the form in which it's absorbed. And you need to know its function inside the plant. So it's our main, well, not, perhaps not obviously to you, but trust me, our main atom that plants need is uh, nitrogen. And the form in which it's absorbed, vast majority in the form of nitrate, so that's NO3 with a little minus sign. Um, the other form in which it can be absorbed is generally NH4+, plus. those are ammonium ions, so these ones are nitrates. This is ammonium. Now they're generally as salts ammonium salts and their function so now if you think back core biological molecules our favorite topic why do we need this nitrogen so if we're thinking about photosynthesis which is where this topic lies for a reason we're looking at taking carbon dioxide plus water and making glucose plus our waste product, oxygen. Now the only atoms that we've got there are carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And from that, we can make any old sugar or polysaccharide. And of course, with just carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, we can make lipids as well. So not a problem for plants. But obviously if you're going to make a protein, you're going to need a nitrogen atom to make that amino group. So function is to allow the plant that allows the manufacture of, and then you've just got a big list of stuff that's got nitrogen in. Uh, so amino acids, Protein, obviously make the amino acids, then make the protein. We've got the nucleic acids with their nitrogenous bases. ATP, which is a nucleotide with a nitrogenous base in. And of course chlorophyll, which is a huge chunky molecule with some nitrogen in it. And some other stuff. So if you don't have any then you can't make nucleic acids to do cell division with and you can't make proteins to make new cell chemicals with and therefore its major effect, a lack of nitrate in the soil, will cause very stunted growth. And this is why farmers add uh, nitrogen fertilisers onto the soil to encourage the plants to be able to make more amino acid proteins, do more cell division. So our next macronutrient that we're going to deal with is phosphorus. I'm doing these in a particular order, I'll tell you why in a minute. They're taken in in the form of phosphate ions. And again, just thinking sort of synoptically, but of core, what do we need them for? What do plants need them for? We need them to make stuff with phosphorus in, like phospholipids and ATP. 
So again, you know, if you can't make any phospholipids, then your cell membranes, you're not going to be able to make new cell membrane for new cells. So again, it will stunt the plant growth. It won't be able to grow as much if it lacks phosphate. We've then got a uh, lovely old potassium. Chemical symbol K. I know, but how does that ever make sense? But it is. Taken into in uh, chemistry. Nonsense taken in in the form of potassium ions. Now again, synoptically, thinking about the role of potassium ions in plants, uh, their function is to lower the water potential in guard cells. Nope. In guard cells during stomatal opening. So, but they must also therefore be involved in osmotic balance. In a, a range of situations and therefore they're probably involved in supporting the plant and maintaining turga of the plant. So, NPK, when I was doing geography, at school, we did NK, NPK fertilizers. So these are the main constituents of commercial fertilizers. I'll just write that down the side. And for some reason, NPK fertilizers just sort of trips off the tongue, so it's quite easy to remember. <coughs> There's one other thing that. Um, a couple of other things that may be required, one of them is on the syllabus, one of them isn't, but we'll deal with them anyway. So, um, one of those is magnesium, taken into plants in the form of magnesium ions, and this is a component. So you know how haemoglobin's got iron in it, chlorophyll's got magnesium in it. This is a component of chlorophyll. So, a soil lacking in magnesium ions, you're expecting to have yellow leaves. You do get that, of course, with nitrate as well, because nitrate's involved in chlorophyll manufacture. Um, that yellowing of leaves is called chlorosis. And because the ions are all mobile around the plant, it, all, it tends to affect the older leaves first. So the chlorosis will start in those sort of older leaves at the bottom of the plant. They'll sort of go yellow, then brown, then die as they, ma they move the magnesium to younger tissue. And lastly, we've got sulphur. Um, and again, I'm only mentioning this really for uh, synoptic reasons. These are absorbed in the form of sulfate ions and their function is in protein synthesis. And they make the amino acid uh, cysteine. It's the only amino acid with sulfur in it. I wouldn't particularly expect you perhaps to know the, that it's cysteine. <coughs> so if you just said to make an amino acid, so it's a component of proteins, to make the cysteine amino acid, and that of course is involved in those disulfide bridges that maintain uh, tertiary structure. So that might help you remember that proteins have got sulphur in them. Again, synoptically, how are they getting into the plant? They uh, move in by... Uh, active transport to the root hair. They are then moved across between cells. Generally dissolved in water. So the ionic 
nature of all of these means that they dissolve in water. And of course if you're dissolved in water you can travel by the apoplast pathway. So that's always lovely. And then quick reminder what happens at the endodermis. You've got active transport again. And then of course they go straight up the xylem, cohesion tension. Again dissolved in water. And then you've got you know active transport out into the cells that are using them. So that's mineral nutrition, the things you need to know. Uh, I think I'll do the practical in another video.